Donald is always on hedge. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he is trying hard to control himself. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for... I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. The song says, Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. I hope to concentrate on my guest. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. I wish to thank you all for coming. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? You are an intelligent woman, Mademoiselle Barnard, and I'm sure that you have already understood my intentions. You think that if we put our heads together, we might come up with something new? I am convinced of it. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. 
He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name by chance starts with B. Must we go into that? No, of course. Not if it makes you uncomfortable. Come on, Mr. Poirot. I imagine we all feel terribly uncomfortable about these murders. It's true. We've to catch the killer, not be spared the gory details. Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but... I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard? Did your sister say if she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Why would she hide the fact from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behaviour. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her... A brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Oh, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... You do not have the money to pay for the train, is that it? It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. <laughs>
Now it is time for us to use our grammar. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Are you going on holiday, mademoiselle? Not exactly, Mr. Poirot. Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. <laughs>